Welcome to Postscripts. Uh, this is Graham Gill, Chief Customer Officer here at Percursive. Really excited today to be joined by uh, Alloy's Director of Professional Services, James Ashton. James, thank you so much for uh, joining, spending the time with me. Um, love for you to kind of just introduce yourself, a little bit about your role, your organization. Yeah, sure. Hi, Graham. And um, how's it going? Going well. Um, so, yeah, I'm the director of professional services at, at Alloy. So, what Alloy does, there's actually a few different companies called Alloy, but we're the we're the one who um, is there to help financial companies deploy safe and seamless digital customer experiences um, across a few different areas of their business. So, we focus on onboarding new customers, underwriting for uh, loans and other credit products and transaction monitoring. So uh, the way the product works in a nutshell is we have a very flexible, uh, easy to use API. We have a workflow engine that allows you to build rules. And then we've built integrations with dozens of different vendors in the kind of fraud compliance document verification space. So all our clients need to do is integrate once with us and they can build complex workflows and uh, rules to onboard customers successfully. So it's about safe and seamless, meaning safe, keeping um, our clients safe from fraud and compliant, but seamless for the customer at the same time. Very cool. Yeah, it, it sounds like a, a really interesting um, offering as, as well as organization. Tell me a little bit about, about your team and, and some of the, the you know, project-based uh, activities that you're, you're, you're doing. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm director of professional services, like you said at the beginning. So what that um, covers at Alloy is um, everything from the pre-sales, so solution engineering, all the demos and um, proof of concept and scoping out the use cases through the implementation process with implementation managers and solution architects, and then post-implementation as well. We have a technical account management team. So uh, sometimes think of it as kind of technical success. Uh, in the in the client facing world, um, I've been here for about almost nearly very nearly two years. Um, seen a lot of growth at that time. The company's grown from about sixty employees up to three hundred, and we've gone from five people in the team when I joined to nearly forty today. So a lot of different teams, um, a lot of people, but basically we're about um, understanding what the client needs to do and getting them set up to achieve that um, as effectively as possible. What are some of the the, the problems and, and challenges, right? I mean, when you go from a small organization to scale, your, your client base grows. Um, what, what were some of the early challenges that you were looking to solve and, and even ones that today you're, you're, you're still trying to figure out? Yeah, sure. So um, like when I, when I came on board, um, you know, Alloy had already started to grow quite quickly. Um, this was 2020, the, the, the pandemic at the time kind of accelerated some of the trends that we were seeing already, obviously with banks, um, you know, a lot of people would, would go in branch to a bank historically to open an account, but my God, I remember kind of, doing that. exactly one of those like leftover offline world things, but when they all closed down, um, they had to respond very quickly to that. So that, that, that among others was kind of driving a big increase in our client, uh, base, and when I came on board, the implementation team as dedicated function was relatively new and small. Um, in terms of how we were managing our onboarding, we used a standalone project management tool. So it was a, it was a tool that did a decent job. It's one of the kind of um, well-known product, but it was pretty siloed in terms of the information that it had within it. So each implementation was tracked in terms of the milestones and the key dates and the activities. Um, but it was really difficult to get information on the progress of implementations out to everybody else in the company. Um, we also have a few complexities to our business in terms of the different types of clients that we work with. We have a very um, robust channel partner network and so on, and there's a lot of different types of clients and types of products that we implement. And we were kind of having to replicate that classification in that system, um, which was quite onerous. Um, so. Um, that that was the number one thing was just um, like information sharing, consistency of information. And uh, everybody wanted to know when the clients were going to go live, basically. And we wanted a better way to share that with people. And awesome. And it's, uh, know, knowing where this ends up, it sounds like you found a, a pretty decent tool that allows you to, to view that. 
Um, you know, I, I'd love to understand sort of like some of the, the, the key findings and efficiencies once you, you moved off of, you know, a, a standalone project management tool that now gave you greater visibility, not only inside your organization, but across all your, your channel partners. Um, can, you, can you speak a little bit about that, some of the efficiencies that you gained? Yeah, sure. So obviously we went with Precursive and uh, we've been super happy customers for um, over a year now. Um, and really what the, the, the thing that kind of drove it for us um, was the, the integration with Salesforce, the fact that it was built into the platform. So that essentially solved both problems for us that we were talking about. So firstly, we were able to just incorporate our project plans into uh, the Salesforce ecosystem. So it lives on the opportunity. Um, and that just gave us access to all of the existing data about what type of client it was and what the revenue of each client was and, and every, all the other data that we hold in Salesforce. And then in addition to that, um, just being able to share that information out easily through Salesforce dashboards and reports and you know, people ask random questions um, about, you know, what's the number of these types of impl implementations at this time? We can easily run a report and we know that the data is reliable. So what it really did is it allows us to scale to a point where today we have um, 10 implementation managers and they're managing like over 100 implementations at any one time. We've got three different product types, lots of different client types, and we've got reliable up-to-date data on each of them that anybody can come and view in the organization if they're interested. Um, and it just wouldn't have been possible to do that without kind of centralizing that information. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very cool use case. And, and one of the things that you and I had talked about, um, you know, when we were deciding whether we should sit down and talk was, was a little bit unique. Um, and I think that's not being fully in control of the go lives. Uh, I'm, I'm always fascinated, right? Because we've all been in organizations and, and we've all been in places where, you know, th there are delays, there are, um, you know, circumstances that come up. Talk a little bit about managing through what I think is a really not a really unique situation of not fully controlling um, the, the the go live event. Yeah, sure. So um, definitely a challenge that we that we continue to face, um, and something that we had to account for in in some of the reporting that we do. So um, like I meant, we like I mentioned, we have a various different types of client that we work with, and we have a lot of channel partners. Um, and we work with anyone from, you know, quite large banks and very large fintechs all the way through, through to, you know, two people in a bedroom, like just started their business. They haven't even gone live yet. Um, or uh, with the channel partner side of things, we might be working with a company who's kind of relaunching or launching for the first time online account opening for a regional bank. Um, and we're one small part of one much larger project that they have. To integrate with their banking core, which can you know take many many months and require a lot of dedicated engineering. Our implementation is relatively more simple and straightforward than that, but in that case, we're kind of dependent on the wider migration project to go live. Um, the other scenario is we work with uh, clients who are literally pre-launch, uh, pre-product sometimes, and so obviously um, there's not much to do with our product until, until you actually have customers applying to uh, open an account with you. And so we can get everything done. If you boil it down to the implementation process, we can get everything done that needs to be done um, relatively quickly, but until the client is ready to move forward with us, whether there's a third party that needs to get everything working or something else, uh, we won't be able to go live. So um, we've been able to track that in Precursive with uh, custom milestones. So we use the milestone reporting, we track a measure that we call ready to go live. That's basically, you know, we could go live with this client tomorrow if we wanted. They're just not quite ready yet, um, and we're able to uh, keep keep track on keep track of that and keep an eye on it as well to make sure that we're we don't have people kind of sitting in that stage for for too long, and we're aware of it if we do. So it's definitely a challenge um, that's inherent to our business model that we face, but it's definitely easier to keep on top of it with Precursive. 
Yeah, that, that's such a unique uh, and really interesting, you know, use case for. It. I'm, I'm, I'm curious how that f- plays into, you know, we always are talking, you know, either in success or implementation about measuring time to value, and and when you're part of something bigger that you can't control. Um, what are your thoughts around me- measurement of that? Does it matter to you? Um, do, do you report on it? Um, yeah, on it definitely does. Um, it definitely does. Um, we we do track that time. Um, and there's a lot of kind of variance. There's a high standard deviation, if you like, between you know what we can uh, achieve in terms of time to value, um, getting clients live, um, and what other projects can take, which can be a matter of months. Um, It's especially important for us, the way that we kind of um, bill is partly usage based. And so um, it's, there's a lot of impetus on us to um, get to that point as as quickly as possible, because it's when we're ultimately kind of making, driving more revenue for, for the business. Um, so yeah, we do have the reporting on it. Um, I'd say it's an area where we can probably do even more to understand um, that time to value by the different segments that we work with and understand where the delays are. Um, and also ultimately um, not just kind of like kind of accepting that it's that's out of our hands, but thinking about where's, where, ways where we can improve sometimes the areas that take the longest on the implementation, kind of understanding what they are and working with our partners in product and engineering to, you know, smooth things out in the product, make it more user-friendly, improve the documentation, um, make the implementation process smoother um, through the product. That's great. So you, you, you've sort of answered um, the, the, the second part of my question of like, you know, what are you doing uniquely with, with Percursive? Um, but I'm always amazed at some of the, the, the innovative ways organizations are leveraging Salesforce. Um, have you, does your organization do anything out of the norm um, that, that might be interesting to share just of how you're leveraging Salesforce in general? Yeah, so definitely we are taking advantage of all the data that we have in Salesforce already around the the different kind of clients that we work with, the different client types, the way it it rolls up, the way we kind of classify the different verticals that we work with makes it super easy to to bucket that up. Um, So, you know, what's the ultimate impact of uh, a long implementation time, whether it's with a relatively small um, client versus a, a relatively large one. Where should we be focusing our attention? Um, some of the other things that we've done, you know, Salesforce um, obviously is a super customizable, flexible platform. So we appreciate that. Um, we can just add new fields that relatively easily. Um, something that we added recently was asking the teams to um, log like the sort of relative effort score of an implementation in any given week out of five. So, um, um, you know, is this taking up like huge amounts of your time this week or is it just pretty quiet, you know, and that would be a one um, all the way up to a five. And then um, we can easily look at the effort score uh, by individual, by team, by client type and so on. And that allows us to do a better job of capacity planning and assigning new clients to individuals because the complexity of an implementa- implementation can really vary significantly, and there's not always an easy way to predict what that's going, what it's going to be until we actually get into it. Um, so that's one way in which we do that. The other thing that we're doing, and again, like the flexibility of Salesforce is great. We've just kind of got into um, proper business intelligence, so we we use Looker for that. Um, and obviously, pu- pushing Salesforce data into Looker was a priority. For the company and most and that data was already there so it was a pretty easy add to just add the extra recursive data objects in there so what that does uh, what that did for us was actually expand access even further to all of the implementation data that we have to the entire company so it's just that kind of open data model that uh, allows us to share more information with more people and then even including partners so Uh, different partners that we have um, want access to certain elements of information and what previously might have, you know, been an email request to our partner team that comes through to us and we have to generate a report and send it back to them. 
we can just now have a dashboard and, and, and send that to people and get them what they want. Um, so yeah, it's those things. No, that that's great. I think we're really getting into into the the nitty gritty of pushing data and being able to take all these data sources, right? We spent all these years in different organizations with very dispersed data that was only for a specific use. And, and now organization, whether it's RevOps or CSOps or delivery and implementation are realizing that there there's information that's beneficial to them on, on both sides of center. And it's great to hear how you, you're, you're pulling that all together. Uh, James, b before we let you go, um, th this is the anything else question. I always like to to end this. Um, you know, w what else? Uh, something about you, your org, your your product, uh, where you see the Salesforce landscaping go landscape going. Um, anything else that's on your mind? Love to give you the opportunity. Yeah. So um, yeah, a couple of thoughts. Like in in terms of Salesforce, I think I'm always interested in finding ways to make it as easy as possible to like get data in and push data out. So when you're talking about, you know, the native product itself, not always like the, the most user-friendly experience for people. Um, and no matter what you write down in a, in a process document and like badger people to follow, you're going to get limited kind of compliance and quality if you don't make it as easy as possible for them. So I like a lot of the features that Procursive have for just updating data seamlessly and easily um, within, the, within the platform. Other, other ways to integrate with it as well, things like Dooley and so on that allow you to just kind of use a template to write a, a note that's, that, that's rich and tem template-based and upload that. Basically, you know, um, super on board with like a single source of truth idea, but making that easy so you actually get compliance. Um, in, in our world, the trend that I feel like is something that we want to focus on most for the, the kind of the rest of the year and beyond is uh, expert services. So an area where we think we can do more, um, we operate in a complex environment. It's a regulated environment. Um, there's a lot of focus from regulators right now on um, fintechs and banking as a service and some of those things. Um, and there's a huge amount of um, kind of unfortunately, like innovation in the fraud world. So uh, online fraud is coming ever increasingly sophisticated and they're kind of coming up with um, even better ways to get around defenses of companies like us. Um, and then like our product is also super complex and not, not the most straightforward, easy, easy to use um, tool out there in the market. So from our perspective, we wanna help clients solve problems as experts. And there are different types of expertise that we need to bring, whether that's uh, compliance expertise and how our product can be used to be compliant with the relevant regulations, whether it's fraud expertise, so understanding like the super uh, evolving and um, complex world of online fraud and the type of fraud people are perpetrating. And then finally, just product expertise and being able to use our platform. So finding ways to provide those expert services, not necessarily just charging an arm and a leg for them, but using them to drive increased usage of our product, which kind of dries up the incremental revenue and increased satisfaction and then renewal rates. So that's what I really care about is not saying, okay, I want to bill a project for however many tens of thousands of one-off revenue that will then deliver and move on but I want to provide expert services that make people love our product and, uh, and, our, and our company really and be happy and do better at their uh, role. So for us, we do need experts to do that and we're trying to find those people. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, that you tagged in there just sort of the satisfaction and renewal. I, th I feel like that's an uncharted or or un, um, un, uh, un, 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 unwound intersection in Salesforce right now. I think there's a lot of folks trying to figure that out. So it, it's interesting um, that it, it's on your radar. James, thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your day. Uh, really interesting um, what the folks are doing there at, at Alloy. I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah. you know, thanks again. Pleasure. Thank you.